Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Build Your Own Software. We're in episode five for the Physical Activity Move and Stretch Coach. So it's some software you can develop yourself, and it's a basic Java desktop application, and it will run on Windows, Mac, Raspberry Pi, and any other type of Linux PC. Okay, so any of those portable computers that run Linux, perfect. Okay, just a reminder, this will not work on the iPhone, the iPad, Android, or any other mobile phones, unless they're running straight Linux. <laughs> And uh, we're not using any Maven or Gradle or any third-party libraries. We're just using good old, good old plain vanilla Java. Okay, so I, I mentioned all that in the first video, but I just thought I'd remind people that that's what we're doing, just so nobody says, oh, it doesn't work on my iPhone. Well, I told you that back in video one. <laughs> okay, so just a reminder. Before watching this video, you should really watch the first four episodes of this series. There they are there. There's the links. I'll be in the description under the video. And also, ideally, you should watch the GitHub Basics, the Installing Java, and the um, and uh, some of my other Java videos too, if you're new to, new to new, new to Java, okay. But assuming you've done all that, let's press on. So this week I thought we'd look at adding tabs to the project, and actually displaying the text area that we've been using in the prior week, uh, and we'll use that on the screen so the user can input and edit exercises, exercises, oops, exercises. Um, we'll look at we'll add some spin edits to control the timers. And if we get time, we'll look at jar files. Uh, so they're, they're sort of like a, a, an XE for Java. So you can just double click them on your, on your Apple One run. And we want to look at fonts as well. So a whole, whole bunch of stuff there. We might not get to all of it, but we'll get to what we can. Okay, thanks for watching. And let's, let's go now. Okay, so before we start, let's just drop down into, Git, into GitHub or Git Bash, the command line. And we'll make sure we get the latest code on our machines. So we'll go Git status. Okay, everything's up to date. If it was up to, if there if there was later code on the server, we should pull it down with the pull command. And if anything was new on our PC that hadn't been checked up into the server, we should do a git add, a git commit, and a git push, just like we've done in prior videos. Okay, so we're all up to date. That's good. Let's just remind ourselves of where we are. There's the code. Let's run it. Okay, so here's the little app running. What we're going to do is add tabs, so you can click a tab up here and go to the settings tab or go to the main tab. And in there we'll display the text area and some timers and things like that. Okay, so that's where we're heading. This is what we got to in a prior week. And if we get time we'll do some things with fonts and things as, as well. Okay, so that's where we're going. We should also display a title bar, a, 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 something in the title here as well, so we'll do that. Okay, so here's our code, now in version 5. For me here, it's the first of first of March, and we're version five, and I'll add the comments later. Okay, and so so down here, uh, I like creating some class constants to hold my my um, version numbers and things like that. So I'll, I'll create some constants: public, static, final, string, uh, and I'll call it application application version equals v, v0.005 and I'll create another one called application name and I'll make it physical activity move and stretch coach or physical activity coach so I like, I like creating constants like that on top of my top of my code I usually put the author and contact email address and stuff like that as well. And I put that in all my applications. Or else in an include file that I bring into my applications. Uh, or, or, or a separate class where I call the program and get those details from a separate program, my constants class, for example, that's shared amongst all my projects. But we're just keeping it simple for now, so let's just use those. So now we, what we do is set the title to that, and we'll also display the version number. So I'll just copy those for now, Control C. I'm gonna use these and then down and down here. And what we can do, uh, anywhere inside our constructor here, we can call set title. Let's do it here. Let's do it here. Set title. Okay, it's just a set title command, and we'll have the application name plus a hyphen with the space around it plus the version. Okay, so just out of the set title there. So set title means set the title for the current. Uh, GUI component that's got context, if it applies, 
and our GUI component is JFrame because we're extending JFrame here. So the title of the JFrame will be the application name plus a hyphen plus the version number. And we can test it out pretty quick just to show you that it works. Okay, there we go, we've got a title. Pretty cool, eh? So if our version number changes in the future, uh, all we need to do is increment that when we go. Okay, pretty good. Okay, let's add a tabbed dialog or a tabbed, a tabbed pane, they're called in Java. Okay, so let's create a tab pane, and I'll create it up here with our GUI components. I'll create it as the first one because it's going to be the, really the parent of the. It's going to have <laughs> everything fitting into it. J tabbed pane, and I'm just going to call it tab pane or J tab pane, and it's equal new J tab pane. So nothing really special there. Let's just check our imports, and I'm bringing in all of Swing, so everything's fine. That's already included. Okay, so tab pane is going to be the thing that's visible on screen with tabs, and we can click on the various tabs. Okay, so when we're adding tabs to our application, we go add tab, and we can type in a description like um, main or whatever, whatever you want to call it, and then you type null. There's another parameter there, but we'll just, we'll just make that null. The next parameter is a panel or, or a GUI component. And the next panel is a string, which is your tooltip. And I'll, I'll say that. Okay, so what we want to do is be careful of our, our constructor getting too busy. And these are really all things to do with our main panel, especially, especially down, to, down to there. So all that code there is really to do with creating our, our main panel. And so what we want to do is keep all our code organized if we can. And we'll start splitting this up into methods. So really, really a good design principle to adhere to is every method does just one task and it's clearly defined. And here the constructor's doing a whole grab, back, grab bag of stuff. So we're going to clean up this code as we go. Okay. And uh, that's a good thing to do. Keep, keep your code clean and organized. So I'm going to cut all this code here, all that code I've highlighted, all down to the a activating the buttons. Okay, so control X to cut that code. Go down underneath the method, and I'm going to put another one in there, private J panel, create main panel. Leave the line space in there, open curlies, close curlies, go back in, and go back to the margin and paste the code. Okay, so you can see all the code is in there that was in the constructor above. I'm now going to add another panel. The panel, I call it. Okay. And it's a new new border layout. New border layout panel. Rows and columns don't apply to that. It's areas. Okay, so I've added this code in here on top. Just one new line. And all the rest of the code inside the create panel method is a is copied from above, copied from the constructor. Okay, so it's returning a J panel. So at the end, we're going to construct this panel. This is going to be the panel we're constructing. And we're going to return that via the method type there. Okay, so down here where we were adding stuff to the user interface, we're now adding it to the panel. The panel. Okay, so I've just changed those two ads there to the panel add. Okay, and then down the bottom, the last thing we're going to do is return the panel. So we're constructing the panel and we're returning it. Okay. So that's all we did. So I just added a new panel at the top. I added the items. Instead of going to the main user interface, the JFrame, they're now getting added to the panel. And I'm returning the panel. Okay. So now when we call create main panel, it's going to return a J panel, which we can then display in our tapped pane. Okay, which is what we put here. Okay, and I can instead of saying main, I can say exercises. Okay, so uh, so the, the tab will say exercises, not main. Um, if you want to say that, and then maybe we should change it to, to create exercises panel. So just change some names here to, to make things a bit better than just main panel. But not really main that descriptive main panel. Okay, so create exercises panel. Exercise is going to be the tab name. Exercise display is going to be the little tooltip that pops up when your mouse hovers over the panel. 
I have the panel name, I have the panel title, trait, uh, tab, tabbed area, and we got create exercises panel, not create main panel. Bit of a tidy up there. Control S, Control 1, Control 2, and oh, we're not getting anything displayed on screen. So we're going to have to look at that. Even our tabbed dialogue's not being displayed, or our tabbed pane. Okay, so we're, we're adding stuff to the tab pane, but no, we're, are we adding the tab pane to the user interface? Okay, we want to fix that straight away. Add tab pane. Okay, now like I said in an earlier video, JFrames by default have got a border layout, but it's not a bad idea, I think, to just make it really clear that's what you mean. Set layout, new border layout. Okay, it's not a, not a bad idea to make that clear anyway, because someone could change that JFrame to a JPanel later on, and, uh, and then the default layout for a panel is not a border layout. Okay, so just providing future flexibility and future robustness if someone comes and changes your code and, and, and sets things. So we're just making it really clear it's a border layout. Adding tab pane with no region automatically gets added to the center, but we can make that clear as well. It's always a good idea to make your code clear. Border layout dot center. Okay, and then the tab pane will be entered to the center region. Control S. Control 1, Control 2, and there we are, we're running, and we've got our tabbed appearing, and all of the GUI components we've, added, we've created so far are there. Okay. And let's, let's now create another panel, and we'll call it this, we'll, we'll create a settings area. Okay. So, we'll create a new tabbed pane entry, and it's going to be settings, and it's going to be create settings panel and the tooltip tool tip's going to be program settings so there it is there okay tab pane add tab settings nulls our second parameter we always leave that null we don't use that create settings panel and then the tooltip okay so now we now did a method called create settings panel so let's do that so we'll go down here to under our create exercises panel, we'll create another method called private J panel. It's returning a panel, create settings panel, open curlies, close curlies. The last line of that's going to be return the panel, <laughs> but we've got to create it first. So we'll come up here and we'll grab some code. To save this typing it all in again, we'll grab that there. Okay. So inside here, we, we, go, we want to add the text area to the user interface or to the panel. And later on, we're going to be adding our spin edits, our little edit buttons that can change integer values. Okay, so let's find our text area, which is at the top here, we created it. And there is it, the exercises text area. That's a list of exercises that are currently in place. And we'll go back down to our, our uh, create settings panel method and we'll add the exercises to the border layout dot center. Okay, that's all it's going to contain for now. It's just the exercises text area. Uh, control one, control S to save it, control one to compile, control two, and there we are. So there's our settings area and there's our exercises. Okay, so we've changed the exercise there. If the mouse hovers over the over there, you'll see the little program tooltip pop up, although my, my big mouse point is holding, hiding that a bit. And same with exercises, but, um, but it's there. And we can, we can just type new exercises in here now. Um, um, torso, stretches, whatever they might be, leg lifts. And if you like a particular exercise, say you like doing leg lifts, um, or you, or you need to do leg lifts, you, you feel you need to do them, just type them in a few times. So it's going to choose an exercise at random out of that list uh, whenever this timer counts down to zero. So if we let that count down now, torso stretches. So that's one of the ones we just typed in. Leg lifts, there we go. So leg lifts is going to appear fairly often because it's in the list four times. So it'll be four times as likely to appear as the other exercises. So there's four copies of it there. Pretty cool. Okay. Let's press on. <clears throat> so probably the next thing we want to do is uh, let's have a look at our 
table of contents here. Um, we might have a look at the spin edits for controlling the exercise time. So we've got the, we'll get the tabs in. Oh, one thing we might do, uh, first of all, is when I click the settings tab, all of these buttons disappear. Okay, that might be something you want, that might not be something you want. Okay, so let's pretend we want to change it so the buttons are always visible, even when we're on the settings tab. Okay, so we don't want to add the buttons to the main tab anymore. We want to add them to the south area of the, of the user interface and then they'll be always visible because this tab region only goes in the center. So if we create a new panel and have these buttons on that panel and add them to the south region of our main JFrame user interface, then they'll always be visible no matter what. Let's do it. Okay, so down here where we're creating buttons, on a, on a grab that code there and control X. So anything that creates a button like this area, I'm going to go control X, paste it down here, and I'll call it private J panel create buttons panel. Okay, and then the code that activates the buttons, that'll go down in that panel as well. So everything to do with button creation is now inside that create buttons panel method. Okay, so there's our create buttons panel method. I'll get rid of the output. Okay, so everything's going in there. Um, the panel. And we're gonna, we're gonna need a, we need that, uh, oh, we need a copy of that, so we'll go cop copy that. Oh, I've already got it there, oh, sorry. Down onto the create buttons panel method. So we're creating the panel. And actually, all we, all we really need is the buttons. All we really need is the buttons panel down there. We don't need the panel, okay? So we're adding the buttons to the buttons panel. And so that's what we need to return. That's the one that's being constructed. Return buttons panel or button panel, okay? And that's all we need. We don't need that code there. Get that out of there. So adding the buttons to the panel activating the buttons so they're clickable, and then returning the panel. So everything to do with button creation is now inside that method. It's all nice and neat and self-contained. We still need to add the buttons panel to the user interface. So we'll copy that there, copy the method name, control C. Go up to our, go up to our main method there, where we're creating a user interface. And we want to go, so we're adding tab pane to the center region. And we want to add the create buttons panel object to the south region and that's it so just let's just recap on our GUI design here so we've got various panels the exercises panel and a settings panel being added to our tabbed pane okay and our tab panes been getting added, added to the center area of the border layout and our buttons panel is being added to the south area okay so that's why you can change tabs and your buttons will always be visible because they're in the south pane they're not, they're not part of the tab pane, they're part of the main user interface. Okay, so they're below the tab pane. The tab pane's in the center, and the buttons are in the south. Okay, so they'll always be visible. We could put them in the north or the east or the west, it wouldn't matter, they're always visible. Okay, so... Okay, let's move on to the spinners. Okay, so sp spinners in Java are little GUI controls where you can click the up and down arrows and it will change the value of a of an integer in, in a little box, starter entry box there. And you can have them so they're, they're directly enterable or not, so you can type data values into them or not. And, um, uh, or you can turn that off so they can only use the arrows to change values. So it all depends on what you want to do. So J spinner, and we'll have it seconds per exercise spinner. equals new spinner, new J spinner. Okay, so we're gonna have a whole bunch of these. We'll have the seconds per exercise period. And the seconds between exercise periods. Okay, long names there, but at least they're nice and descriptive. You know exactly what they mean. So seconds per exercise, seconds per exercise period. So you might be doing 15 seconds per exercise. Each exercise period might last two minutes. 
and the seconds between exercise periods uh, might be 10 minutes or 60 minutes worth of seconds or whatever they whatever they are so okay so as you can as you can probably guess the values of these are going to derive our timers so when we change our when we change the values here we want to also change the values set to, set to our timers here these are just the default values okay so let's copy those and we'll cop we'll, we'll paste them down in our exercises panel because that's where they're going to get added sorry our exercise settings they're on the exercise settings panel and so what we're going to do now is make it so these things have particular settings so set model you do it with a set model command and the first value you type is the the value the value they've currently got and I might I might say 15 seconds per exercise and then you type the minimum value so the minimum time you can do an exercise for maybe 15 is the minimum maybe you want to make it five maybe you want to make it one second per exercise but the labels will be flashing on screen very quickly I want to make mine 15 you can make yours whatever you like and that next one's the maximum and I might say 100 seconds per exercise is the maximum or 60 so you're doing this exercise 60 minutes 60 seconds sorry so whatever you want to do you can set it to 60 seconds there and this is the the step so when the user clicks the up and down arrows on the spin edit how often how much does it change by one second five seconds I want to make mine change by five seconds so just to recap on those again <clears throat> those values so it's the the value the minimum the max and the step okay so that's describing those four those four values there <clears throat> So what we want to do is a similar sort of thing for the others. Exercises per period and ex seconds between exercises, exercise periods. I'll line them all up so they're all nice and neat. And bring that across as well. And so the exercise, exercise period seconds might be, current value might be 60, so exercising for 60 seconds. The minimum, you might say an exercise period can't be less than 60 seconds. The maximum might be five times 60 seconds, so five minutes. And the step might be 15 seconds. So as you can see, you can have different values for each type of spinner that, you, that you've got. The seconds between exercise periods, let's say the default value is um, 60 times 60. So 60 times 60 seconds. Still lining everything up. The, uh, the default value might be, or the minimum value might be uh, 10 times 60 seconds. So 10, 10 minutes between exercise periods is the, is the minimum. The, the maximum value might be um, maybe, maybe, maybe the same as the, as the value, the current value. Okay. And the step might be 60. So you can when when you go the click click the up arrow and down arrow, for this spinner, it changes by sixty seconds each time. Now these values are getting quite long and unwieldy, and the user might not know what three thousand six hundred seconds is. So maybe as a tweak later on, we can make these work in minutes. So that one there might work in seconds, and these ones here might be work in minutes. But that's that's a tweak we'll make later on. Let's just leave them all in seconds for now. <clears throat> complete those two and then what we want to do is um, add them to our user interface so we're going to add these three spinners to our user interface and so we want another panel and I'll call it spinner panel okay so what I'm thinking is we'll have a label and then the, and then the spinner and then another label and then a spinner and then another label and a spinner Okay, so maybe maybe not a board layout, but maybe maybe a grid layout might be best here. Grid layout, and we want one row and six columns. So a label spinner, label spinner, label spinner. So six columns. So we go across the page. Okay, and then the spinner panel. Dot add, and we want to add a label. So what we can do is we we can we can create the labels here because they're only used they're only used to add to the user interface, they're not used anywhere else in the program. So we can create the labels here and, and add them, 
Or we could create the labels up here and add them as well with the spinners that are created. Or we could just create anonymous labels. So why don't we just have a go at creating anonymous labels and never need it again. Okay, so we're back down here. Let's just create a new J label. And uh, this is the seconds. Okay, so anonymous labels just means we're not giving them a name. We're not saying spin the label one equals new label. We're just we're just creating the label on the fly, adding it to the user interface. So we're not we're not we're not even bothering to give it a name. Okay, we're giving it a label, but uh, we might even go per that way if that if that suits you better. Seconds per exercise. And then we want seconds per exercise period. Or if you want to go, if you want to go that way, seconds six six. If that's if that's better, exercise seconds, exercise period seconds. Maybe not. I think I'll look it back the other way. Of course, you can do it however you like. <laughs> and then we've got the seconds between exercise periods okay so there's our three labels and now we want to also add the spinners as well so we want to have the label in the spinner label in the spinner so I'll add that spinner there and we'll add the second spinner there and the third spinner there so copy and paste can save you a bit of code by Copying and copying and adapting. I'll space things out a bit to make it easy to read. So seconds per exercise, we need the seconds per exercise spinner. The seconds between the seconds per exercise period, we need the seconds per exercise spinner. And the seconds between exercise periods, we need the seconds between exercise period spinner. Last thing to do is add them to the. We don't want these to be visible on all of the of the tabs. We only want these items here, and and the text area to be visible on the settings panel. That's why we're doing it in the settings area creation. So what we do down here is the panel, add spinners panel, and it's border layout dot south. We're adding it to the south region. Okay, and that should be it. Let's give it a go. Control one. Ah, so I've, I've, made a, I've made a little error here. So you don't actually set these values directly in the spinner itself. You set the model, okay? And we're, we're setting the model here, but we're not, we're not actually creating a model here. This isn't a model. This is just four numbers. So we need to go... So we need to go new... Spinner number model. It's quite a mouthful. And then don't forget to close your round brackets at the end. Okay, so I've added this little bit of code in here. New spinner number model, open round brackets, and then close round brackets there. New spinner number model. New spinner number model. Scroll across to the right and put a closing round bracket in. So you've got two round brackets. One for the new spinner number model and one for the new and one for the set model. Okay, so and we must put our comments across as well so they're nice and lined up. And that's all you need. Okay, so you can actually set the values of the spinner directly with set value, set max, set min, and all that sort of stuff. Or else you can just do it in a single line of code with a spinner model, spinner number model. And uh, that's what we've done there. So we've done a little bit of a shortcut in code, but it makes your code quite long. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's, that's how you do it. So let's control one, control two, and go to our settings screen. And there's our spinners, so I can go this one here should be counting up by one by five seconds, so up by five. This one here should be going up by, I think, 15 seconds. Yep, 15 seconds and down. And you couldn't go less than 60, you remember? And this one here, we couldn't go less than 15. And this one here is going up by, ooh. Oh, the maximum is 3,600, 60 minutes. And then we, we can count down by 60 seconds at a time. So like I said earlier, it's not very friendly. We probably want to make this one here at least work in minutes, but we'll do that right later. We'll do that later, okay? Um, you might also note here that when we changed exercises, it didn't save that. We've got the code in to read exercises from file, but we're not writing them to file again. So we need to add that code in as well. So what do we do first? Hmm, okay. 
we might we might put a bit of a space in here so that this this, this is spaced out a bit more. In fact, all of all of those on one line is maybe a bit much. I don't know. It's hard to see the whole label. Um, and also note that this one here needs a longer label, but this one here doesn't. This one here is happy with a shorter label. So we can fix that as well. There's a whole lot of stuff here we can fix. <laughs> it's all about tweaking your code and improving. Oh God. Okay, so this one here needs a long a long label. That one here only needs a shorter one. So uh, that's the problem with grid. Grid tries to make all the cells and columns the same size. So um, oh, we might look at using a flow panel instead. See how that goes. So let's use a flow panel. So instead of using grid layout, we'll change that to flow layout, and it will be flow layout dot center. So everything's going to be centered, okay. And we want some spaces in there. So this where this that's previous spinner ends. So we'll put four spaces in there between that. So it spaces it out between that and the next spinner's label, and we'll put another four spaces in there, okay. So we changed grid layout to flow layout, and made it flow layout center. And we'll just put some spaces in the front of these two labels. Don't leave it in front of that one because that's the first label that's on the screen, so it doesn't really matter anyway. It's over on the left-hand side. There's nothing before it to space out. And that should be it. Let's compile Control One, Control Two. Go to our Settings tab, and everything looks a bit better. Although we are losing that. See, it wraps on. It's actually wrapping onto the next line. If we could, if we could make that region expand, it wraps in onto the next line. So that's a little bit of a problem. It just means we've got to make our user interface a bit wider. Seconds per exercise period, seconds per exercise, seconds second between exercise periods. Make our user interface a little bit wider, that'll do us for now. Um, okay, so there's our, there's our spinners. They're not actually affecting these timers yet. So what we need to do is wire them up so they affect, they're affecting the timers. And uh, we might do that next. Um, yep. Okay, so how do you activate spinners? How do you make code run automatically when the up or down arrows or the value is changed? Okay, and if we go back to buttons, you'll see buttons have an <laughs> buttons panel. There it is, buttons panel. Buttons react to action listeners. So when you click on a button with a mouse or a menu, they react to action listeners. With spinners, it's all about change listeners. Okay, so we'll go back up to our spinner panel and I think we might even do it. I tend to activate things as the last bit of, bit of code in the method. So um, dot add change listener. And we're going to use lambdas to make our code simpler event. And So when that, when that spinner changes, when someone clicks on the little up arrows and down arrows or types in a new value, we're adding a, a, list, a change listener to it. And so this code here will run, whatever that code there is. Okay, seconds per exercise changed. Um, I'll call it seconds per exercise spinner changed, just so they got that, it's got that name plus changed at the end to make it a bit more obvious where it comes from. And that way, if we ever go through and do a search and replace on that, we'll also change change the method name as well. So it'll match, it'll change to meet the spinner, the spinner's name. Okay, so we need a new method. We'll go down to our yeah, just down here's fine. Private void. So when this spinner changes, what we want to do is affect the spinner that's to do with changing exercises. Let's just scroll up to our constructor. So this, oops, that's not our construct. That's our constructor. Yep. And so it's it's these timers here we want to affect. That's that's the seconds per exercise timer or the exercise timer. Um, that's the one we want to affect. That's that's one that had a three second value by by default. <clears throat> okay. So scroll back down. Down to here. And to know what to know what method to call, let's have a look at our our, 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 our Java help timers 
timer. We're using oops, timer. We're using a swing timer. And so let's have a look, and I'll show you how to work out which method to call. So we're we're calling set delay. Okay, that's the time is uh, between event delay. The number of milliseconds between successive action events. Okay, so we're going to call set delay and pass in a new value of the seconds to delay or milliseconds to delay because we're talking about time is here. So that's going to be an that's going to be a milliseconds value. Milliseconds. Set delay. And we want to get it from this timer. So we go dot get value. And then we want to convert, convert that to milliseconds. So times 1000. Okay. So we're changing the delay of the timer to the current value of the spin edit or the spinner times a thousand. So we're seconds times a thousand to get milliseconds. Okay, we can do the same sort of code for the other ones. Um, I'll just copy and paste those two so they're, they're ready to go. This is where we're going to start working. Uh, I'll, I'll turn on a bookmark there. Control F2 turns on bookmarks and then you can use F2 to navigate between them. So I'll just turn on a bookmark there to make it a bit easier to get around the code. So I'm going to copy those two. I'm going to add change listeners to those as well. And we'll do that one. And it's going to be seconds per... Okay, so I'm keeping the same names as the, as the parent spinners. Getting some long names here. I could wrap that onto another line to make it easy to read if that helps. the okay so exercise spin, seconds per exercise spinner seconds per exercise change spinner changed seconds per exercise period spinner seconds per exercise period spinner changed so I'm keeping everything in step seconds between exercise period spinner seconds between exercise period spinner changed so I'm keeping all the method names in step it helps to avoid confusion okay so let's grab those two names again and we'll scroll down to our methods to deal with those. And I'll just paste that code here, just temporarily, just to grab it. Okay, so I'll use that code there. Seconds, seconds per exercise period, seconds per exercise period, so make sure we got it right. Seconds between exercise periods, seconds between exercise periods. So I can delete this code here now. And now it's going to change the timer that it's affecting. So this one here affects the exercise timer. That's, that's the amount of time an exercise is done. This is the seconds that an exercise period lasts. So I need to use a different timer and a different timer here. So let's go and get the names back at the top again. I might set a, a bookmark up here as well. Control F2. And I'll copy this code down below just for a second, just to give us... Uh, the names that we need. So control F2, F2 to jump, jump between bookmarks. So exercise timer was that one. So we can delete that. This is the amount of time in an exercise period. So it's that one. And this is the seconds between exercise periods. So that's that one. Okay, delete this code again. Okay, and that should be it. Okay, now we've still got things to think about. Let's have, a look at our, oops, let's have a look at our code. Get value. Get value returns. Sorry. Um, uh, J spinner. And let's have, a look at the, let's have a look at the method is for getting the value. I thought it was get value. Um, get value. That returns an object. Oh, I see. So it returns an object. Even though it's an integer in there, it's still returning an object. So we need to do a bit of type casting. So round brackets int. So we're converting whatever is in the spinner. It should be an integer. <laughs> I don't know why that's the case. It's returning an object, but anyway. Um, so we need to convert that to an integer. Let's just make sure we are using the right one. Uh, get value, get value. Returns the current value of the model. Typically this value is displayed in the editor. So it's the current value of the that's that's in the, that's in a little data entry box or the spinner. Okay, so this is the right one. I don't know if it's right. Why it's returning an, an object though? Int. Same thing there. Int. And same thing there. Int. Okay. 
Okay, so just converting them to an int and then multiplying. Okay, there's our spinners. If we just expand a little bit, we'll get that on there as well. So now we're changing that the exercise period lasts for two minutes, 120 seconds instead. And so we could scroll over here and we'd see that would take two minutes to two minutes to count down once that reaches zero. It was 60 seconds. Now it should be two minutes, but it's not, is it? So something's not quite right there. Hmm, okay, so let's just check our code. And one thing we can do there, we'll, we'll focus on this one now. It's because something's wrong, so we'll just see what's going on. Let's go system.out.println. And we'll put the method we're running. And we must well display that value. Okay, so whatever that integer is coming back from that from that uh, spinner is, we're going to display it on the console screen. Okay, so if we had a nice debugger like if we're running an Eclipse or NetBeans, we could just put a watch on that spinner and, and get the value out of it and display it without putting any print line statements in. But we're using TextPad because that's what my students in my classes are using. Uh, that's the prescribed software, so we, we're doing it the old way, which you just display the values you need to the screen. Okay, so let's grab those two names again. And we'll scroll down to our methods to deal with those. And I'll just paste that code here just temporarily just to grab it. Okay, so I'll use that code there. Seconds, seconds per exercise period, seconds per exercise period. So make sure we got it right. Seconds between exercise periods, seconds between exercise periods. So I can delete this code here now. And now it's going to change the timer that it's affecting. So this one here affects the exercise timer. That's, that's the amount of time an exercise is done. This is the seconds that an exercise period lasts. So I need to use a different timer and a different timer here. So let's go and get the names back at the top again. I might set a, a bookmark up here as well. Control F2. And I'll copy this code down below just for a second, just to give us uh, the names that we need. So control F2, F2 to jump, jump between bookmarks. So exercise timer was that one. So we can delete that. This is the amount of time in an exercise period. So it's that one. And this is the seconds between exercise periods. So that's that one. Okay, delete this code again. Okay. And that should be it. Okay. Now we've still got things to think about. Let's just have a look at our oops, let's have a look at our code. Get value. Get value returns. Sorry. Um, uh, J spinner. And let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the method is for getting the value. I thought it was get value. Um, get value returns an object. Oh, I see. So it returns an object. Even though it's an integer in there, it's still returning an object. So we need to do a bit of type casting. So round brackets int. So we're converting whatever is in the spinner. It should be an integer. <laughs> I don't know why that's the case. It's returning an object, but anyway. Um, so we need to convert that to an integer. Let's just make sure we are using the right one. Uh, get value, get value. Returns the current value of the model. Typically, this value is displayed in the editor, so it's the current value of the that, that's that's in the, in the little data entry box or the spinner. Okay, so this is the right one. I don't know if it's right. Why it's returning an, an object though? Int, same thing there. Int, and same thing there. Int. Okay, so we're just converting them to an int and then multiplying. Okay, there's our spinners. If we just expand a little bit, we'll get that on there as well. So now we're changing that the exercise period lasts for two minutes, 120 seconds instead. And so we could scroll over here and we'd see that would take two minutes to two minutes to count down once that reaches zero. It was 60 seconds. Now it should be two minutes, but it's not, is it? So 
if something's not quite right there. Hmm, okay, so let's just check our code. And one thing we can do there, we'll, we'll focus on this one now. It's because something's wrong, so we'll just see what's going on. Let's go system.out.println. And we'll put the method we're running. And we must also display that value. Okay, so whatever that integer is coming back from that from that uh, spinner is, we're going to display it on the console screen. Okay, so if we had a nice debugger like if we're running an Eclipse or NetBeans, we could just put a watch on that spinner and, and get the value out of it and display it without putting any print line statements in. But we're using TextPad because that's what my students in my classes are using. Uh, that's the prescribed software, so we, we're doing it the old way, which you just display the values you need to the screen. It's saying that's not, and it's line 220, 220, so it's picking on that. And this only happens to put that in. <laughs> Seconds per size period, spinner. I didn't change anything there. Hmm. Quite similar dub debugging window. Cannot find symbol. Get across. Okay, and somewhere between typing, I've accidentally typed a, a one in there, so that's easy fixed. Put it back out was control one, control two, and I'll bring the console screen across as well. And we'll change that spinner. And you'll see, you see it's changing. That's, that's okay, that's good. Let's put that line of code back in. Control one, control two. Okay, so it's getting the right values, 75 and 90, that's correct. 75, 60, can't go below 60. Cool, cool, so that's all working. So it's gotta be something in our set delay. So let's go back to our help on that. Yeah, so get delay definitely returns the milliseconds and set delay definitely sets the delay milliseconds between event timings, event, event firings. So that's definitely the right method to call. Let's have a look at our code. So we're multiplying by a thousand. That's correct. We're not having any problems with overflow because we're just dealing with small numbers. So it can't be integer overflow going on. Let's now display the delay that timer thinks it's got. That will be milliseconds. Milliseconds, milliseconds, doesn't really matter. Okay, I'll drag that window across, drag that across. So 75, 75,000, that's correct. 90, 90,000, that's correct. Yep, so that's all working great. So let's see what happens here. It should be 75 seconds to count down. And it's not. So it's only 10 seconds, it's only original 10 seconds or whatever it was. So something's not working, we need to figure out what. So I've messed around with things here, I've checked the help and uh, try to see what's going on. And I've even put restarts and stop and starts to try and stop and start the timer again to, to get it to, to, to do the right thing. Uh, it's not reacting to this change in milliseconds, change in delay. We also wrote this little tiny program here that creates two timers. And every time, time timer one fires off, it calls display dot, which just prints out a dot on the screen. And every time timer two fires off, it fires off half the delay of timer one. So timer one, set delay, timer, timer one, get delay, divided by two. So get its current delay, divide by two, and make that its new delay. Okay, and, um, and that's working great. So I'll show you that running. So slow dots at the start, and then they slowly speed up every second. They get delay divided by two, delay divided by two, and pretty soon it's just gonna fill the screen. It goes, 
goes crazy. Okay, so so what I'm doing there is that is, is the right code. I haven't made a mistake in my code. So, but something strange is going on. I've also gone through the code here and I've done a search for exercise exercising timer. And there's the progress bar, that's fine. There's the timer. That's where it's set up with the initial delay. Oops. That's where I set the progress bar details. That's all right. It's getting the delay, getting the maximum, which is that maximum here. That's a progress bar. That's setting the delay in our little change listener here. Uh, that's where it's starting and that's where it's stopping. So it's, uh, and then we're setting the progress bar value again. Progress bar, if it's running, take one off the timer value. Oh, I've got these ran the wrong way. <laughs> uh, that should be exercising timer. Exercising timer progress bar. Exercising timer progress bar. And this is exercise timer progress bar. Exercise timer progress bar. Exercise time progress bar. That's exercise timer, so it should be those ones. Exercising, exercising period. Okay, I had those ran the wrong way. But anyway, the... Um, So I'm using, I'm not uh, doing anything strange with the timers. It's just setting them, setting initial initial delay once <coughs> when they're created. So one thing I might do is grab this bit of code here, and when the exercising timer is started down below, I'll also display the milliseconds before it starts. So that's where it starts, and just see what the latest value is, and I'll take this code out from here, just so we don't confuse things. Control one, control two, and let's make a few changes here. That's all being recorded correctly, so it's now 105 seconds. And let's see what the value is when this timer starts. So we're doing a little bit of detective work here to try and work out what's going on. Something strange is happening. So I'm expecting this to say 105,000 now, and it is. But it's still only taking nine seconds to count down. Let's, ah, right, okay. So it's the, it's the progress bar is controlling things, not the, not the timer. The timer just counts, counts down how often this fires, but the progress bar's values are what con controls how long it takes these progress bars to count down to zero. So of course it's not changing, because I've got to also, not only set the delay, I've got to reset the maximum value for the progress bar. So let's go and get that code from up above the progress bar when I do the set maximum. So it's this code here. We want to, we don't want to fire off these values, the, these two commands every time the progress bars uh, delay, every, every, every time the timer's delay changes. We're going to get the timer divided by a thousand and set the maximum again and also set the value of the maximum to the maximum. So these are the two things we want to do every time, the, every time the timer changes value. Okay, that's what I was missing because it was actually the progress bars that control that they count down to zero. So they'll set the nine seconds originally, and they'll still just counting down to nine seconds. So the delay was changing <laughs> between fires, but the, the progress bar was still changing, uh, st was still firing off for the nine seconds, counting down to nine seconds originally, instead of the 105 seconds or whatever it was. But that should be fine now, which should be fine. So I'm very confident. I'm going to delete this code. And um, let's now see that work. So we'll change it to 75 seconds. So uh, and then go back and now this should take 75 seconds to count down to zero not the nine seconds okay so we've, we've changed the progress bar maximum as well and there it is that's better okay so that's going to take 75 seconds so that's working beautifully now we need to do the same same strategy to the other progress bars and the other timers okay same sort of strategies just copying and pasting code and changing it we could take those bits of code out now. We know they work. Everything's working great. Michael's got over his um, <laughs> mental lapse. Don't forget it was actually weeks ago that I started writing this project. So it's weeks since I've looked at some of these timers and some of this code. So I, sh I should have just bit the bullet and done it all in one day. So here it's going to be the seconds between exercise period spinner, exercise period delay timer. So it's going to be the exercise period delay timer progress bar. That's the great thing about keeping all your names in sync. And excise period delay pro uh, 
progress bar timer there and progress bar there. So I'm just changing everything to be exercise period delay, exercise period delay timer, progress bar, progress bar, progress bar. That's all correct. And one more to do, which is that first one. So it's exercise timer, seconds per exercise spinner. Oh, I've already got that, sorry, I've already got that code. Um, exercise timer, this is exercise timer progress bar, exercise time progress bar, exercise time progress bar. So that's all to do with exercise timer. That's all to do with exercising timer. And this one's to do with exercise period. Exercise period, exercise period. Yep, so everything looks right there. So I think we're okay. Control one, control two. So let's change the exercise period. So this is 60 seconds. So let's change it to one, uh, 60 seconds or whatever less than, than 60 minutes. So that's 59 minutes now. So that's counting down very slowly. <laughs> so that's working great. And these times here will work well as well. Ah, now you see we haven't we haven't changed anything there. So it's 60. That's why that one's counting down in nine seconds again. So let's fix that. So when we first create our code, um, instead of instead of setting these values up uh, inside our constructor, why don't we call these methods, and that will get the latest values of the of the uh, of the spinners, and use those accordingly. So let's do that. So we're going to call these methods directly. And I'm talking about up here. Create settings panel, create the main exercise panel. So I'm talking about this code here. It'll all make sense in a sec, don't worry. So we don't have to worry about, we don't want to use the delay to set the timers anymore. We're using the spin edits. So we could take that bit of code out there, delete, take that bit of code out there, delete, and take that bit of code out there, delete. So we've just got the set minimums to zero for the progress bars. And then we're using these methods, which fire off every time the spinners are changed to set the maximums. We're using those at the start there to set the maximums to whatever the spinners currently have by default. And and we know they've got, they've got a value by default because they are created there in the settings panel. Okay. Um, so let's run that. Control one, control two. There's the code running. Um, we'll So it's going to take 59 minutes to count down. Now there is a little issue. Um, it's going to show it this time. Oh, there it goes. So this hasn't reached zero yet, and it's, this is counting down. So And then it gets down a little bit, and then goes back again. And it goes back again. Okay, so there's still a little issue there that we'll sort out. Um, but that's enough for this time. It's a, the, the video is already nearly an hour long. So we'll just do a quick review. So we added, added tabs, we displayed our text area, we've added spin edits for controlling the timers, and we didn't get to those two things, so we'll do those next time. Anyway, the latest code will be on my GitHub as always, I'll zip it up into a, into a single zip file, and uh, it'll be, in fact I can do it now in front of you if you like, so it's just a jar code, I'll put the readme, oh, one in, no, one, I won't put the readme, and if you want to see that timer explore, I'll, leave, I'll include that as well so you can see a timer expl explore. <clears throat> that's version 5 or video 5 or episode 5 and I'll get rid of the class files because they're just temporary code compiled by Java and um, so next time just to remind ourselves next time we're going to do the the um, save to file save exercises to file to file when they change Or just every time we every time we exit the program, we could save them to file if you like. Um, anyway, we'll work on that next time. So we've got those three things to do next time. And we've still got a little bit of time and stuff to sort out. Timer in progress bar. There's some sort of conflict there still. 
Okay, and um, I'll put it up on GitHub for you while I'm here. Git bash here. And I'll go git status. And I've got some change code and some new stuff. Git add, full stop to add it. Oh, git, not got. Git add, git, git commit, minus M, um, version zero, to, oh, episode five. I'll call it episode five. <clears throat> There we go, and git push. Okay, that's all done. Git status again to check. Git status, everything's good. And here's my GitHub. Click a quick refresh. Okay, so there's the episode five codes that changed or new stuff. Uh, this is zip file containing everything, the zip, the, the Java code, and. Um, and I'll probably make that say a list of things that we covered, like like likes included in the above ones. So I'll just change those episode fives off, offline. I'll do that. But the code's there, ready to go. So if you want to follow along, please do. It's a great thing to learn. Uh, if you're coming new to Java or if you're an experienced programmer who wants to learn Java or if you just want to follow along for the hell of it, please feel free. And uh, don't forget uh, to click the like if you like these videos and subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. So thanks for watching. I hope the video was useful. If you'd like to see more videos, more of me developing software or showing you how to do stuff or whatever, please subscribe, upvote or click the like button and please comment. Comments are very important and um, let me know if you've got any ideas for future projects or future software you'd like to see me develop or uh, if you've got any, any questions or anything that's not clear, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer or provide videos on it in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.